That's D-A-T-A-T-F-L-Y dot com. Know how is just a click from audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com. Wow. A lot of people say it's hard to update your latest MacBook Pro. Not today. You'll learn how to upgrade the hard way so you're ready. is the least repairable or upgradable computer we have ever seen. And it's because Apple moved the batteries they take and moved the screen to the glass. There were a lot of parts we couldn't replace. But there is something you can easily replace in Apple. And I thought I'd do it just for you. Are we going to need a solder for that? <laughs> no, I'm not going to surprise you. See, uh, what I'm going to show you applies not just to the Retina 6 and the Mac Pro, but also to all the Macs in the room. Now, don't tell anyone but me. I want the bigger hard drive. You know, these the air has a definite flavor now that we've installed the flavor inside. Can I call them a hard drive? I don't know. I mean, they're 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 the NAS storage device. Let me just show it to you. Okay. There's no screen. Let me just flash it to you. And Apple uses a somewhat proprietary setup to do that. It's not, uh, you know, as you might see in another laptop, an actual device. You can buy it at Shadow Cast or anything like that. It's it's a it's a little PC card, but it doesn't take very long for four companies like the one I bought this from, Other World Computing, to come up with a, uh, a replacement part for the uh, hard drive for the SSD drive in the MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs. And what's cool about this is these are expensive drives. They tend to be very low-capacity SSD drives. I bought mine at Best Buy with a 128 gig. Really isn't a lot of space. Or maybe I got, no, I actually, I got 26 gigs this one from Best Buy. But we're going to make this one even bigger. We're going to put a 480 gigabyte hard drive in here, and it's even a little bit smaller than the drive that I just showed you. So that's why it's going to be, uh, be very fast. And the other reason I wanted to show you this stuff is because yeah, it's Yeah, and of course, it's, it's your machine, so we could actually do something with it. Now, the nice thing about other world, go ahead, Jim, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, so the, the, what I was curious about, and I've seen a lot of people ask, why not just upgrade to the larger SSD when you're making it, when you're ordering the MacBook Pro? Well, first of all, it's cheaper, and it was faster. So, and Frankly, I wanted to get my MacBook Pro from the Retina Store right away. <laughs> it, it saved me a lot, but 480 is the better number. And and I bought it from Best Buy as well. So and on top <laughs> of this, there's that. On top, I was thinking about that when you answered that because not only do you get that new drive, 480 gigabytes, but you take the old piece of kit or the other world computing uh, composer, you have an, another SSD. So now you have more than you would normally get with a 512 or 512. You have the combination of the 256 and the 480. Yeah, that's kind of the kind of the the. Uh, sugar that other world computing adds on top of it, at least until the end of the, as you say, the end of the month. Yeah, September 30th right now, if you order from other world computing, you get the SSD, all the kit that you need to take apart the MacBook Pro and the enclosure that's, I think, been totaled by the machine already. So I, I haven't got my enclosure yet. That will go back to, but that will let you take the old drive to the enclosure. Now I'll have a 4.6 gig USB free extra memory. How awful to have an extra hard drive in your hand. Uh, of course. So let me show you what comes in the kit. And boy, this is very complicated. They have, uh, by the way, if you don't live in the Mac community, go to here. They have a great video on the Other World Computing site, macfails.com. It shows you exactly what to do. And if you don't have a Mac, we'll do it anyway. You get the drive. I've already opened it because I thought you would want it. This is the drive from the Mylar Mate Battle Charge. That's going to be important. We'll talk about the batteries in a second. That's the drive. Not much to it. We also get two special screwdrivers because Apple has, and this is Apple does this with all their hardware, now is using unusual screwdrivers that are hard to come by. This is a pencil lobe screwdriver, a five lobe, it almost looks like a flathead when you get them up close, screwdriver that we'll need for the screws on the case. And this is a Quartz uh, screwdriver. This is uh, something that Apple has used uh, for a long time in a lot of its uh, computers. And you know, it is better in some ways than the Retina 4. It has more uh, fa facets on it. There is no center in the front of it. So it, it actually does a better job than the Retina screwdriver, but I think Apple also knows that. But And of course, my PC is the best. Yeah, this is an old one. This is a 2001 PowerBook. There we go. Yeah, let me show you that app 
actual old old kind of Halo Blue Badge on the tree. If you want an upgrade to Ram, it is very different. Uh, it's done with really good detail and stuff. You actually just pop off the keyboard like that. So this now happens next to the Easter and egg. Take a look at that, by the way. There is the Ram. Now the Mark Drive is on the bottom. Yeah. Let's take out I the got battery. I did upgrade the Tug Ram. Hey, I just want you to look at that and remember what this looks like. There's the airport card. Hey, there's Francis Block, all yeah. kinds of things. So we're going to be looking at the same thing going on in this new map that we just showed you, Brett. So let's first get into the tree. And uh, again, we're going to use the special antenna motion to do that on the tree. And, and uh, other will point out that each tree is different. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trees we're going to have to remove. In fact, you might want to speed up this part of this video because it's going to take a little while. You also want to be careful when you're taking these trees out that you don't lose one or two of those very small and you keep them in order. So what I'm going to do, this is I like to do, Brett, is put them right here on this blue piece of paper I have here. You can see that. In the same rough position that they were in before I removed them. And that way I can go back and look. Don't just lump them together. Yeah, there's three different sizes you can pop them in. It's a little different if you do it in some chunks of that. So organize them on a piece of paper. I'm a bit of a spaz. Sometimes I'll even scotch tape them to the, to the actual paper because if, if somebody just comes by and runs by them. You have a small size. Yeah, I'm not going to run them by. I have papers that come by <laughs> and steal my wet stuff. So if, if you want to keep it organized, I definitely suggest that you pop things down and do it in a very, very quiet space if you can find one. And it happens to some people. One of them is if you use the antenna layer for those posts and stuff to do that. And these are really tiny. If I were using just plain old Phillips to do the antenna for to do that, it might be, it'd be easy to strip the heads off of them. Mm -hmm. They're so small. So in a way, there, you do have a lot more security when this when this is in a little sealed container. You want to do one just yeah. to see what it feels like? Maybe I'll it, it really it. it really is. It's I got two out of the way and two in here, so I'll, I'll pop. You see you see how how uh, that's fine. That's it feels good. It's you know you're not completely secure when you do that. And by the way, next to the next one, I'm going to do that as well. Yeah, I told you it was a spaz. <laughs> Did the hardest thing. This slides right off. And this is the same with a lot of them here. It's a thin piece of aluminum that pops off the inside. Now, remember how that old last uh, uh, power bridge looked? This is a lot more tiny and a lot more powerful. These are the batteries. Quite a bit of battery. By aluminum and your batteries, the closest you have on there, and now you throw it. You made it so you couldn't remove the batteries, but you also made it so you put a lot of those little small tiny shells. In the old in the old power thing, we had we had the batteries. Yeah, but it, but in order to make this removable, you had to make it easier to handle the little. These are not. These are actually blue aluminum. You see the special aluminum on this thing is what uh, all the people were talking about in there. Um, this, by the way, is the hard drive. It looks just like that memory that we added before. And you see, I didn't have to repeat that. I just said let us work computing. I put this in last week because I wanted to try that hard drive. But I'll show you how that works. Um, nice. Very beautifully laid out circuit board here as well. It's clean, it's tight, there's not a lot of wrinkle tolerances. To be honest, I wouldn't want to put any RAM in or stock up on other board. I wouldn't want to do anything like that. So I think this weapon isn't like particularly upgradable, and I would take your word for it, repairable computer. But this particular upgrade is very simple. Two steps to this now. The first one is to lift up the one that's going to make you a little bit uh, nervous, and it's almost it's just the, uh, the case for the, the, uh, the uh, battery. And the only reason we have to remove this is that little lip overlaps the, um, so we're going to remove this. It's just glued on there like tape. Mm -hmm. And we're going to just take out the connector here, the little piece of plastic. And it just comes out with your finger on the little side there. It's very, very simple. You put, you couldn't really harm it. Uh, yeah, I don't think. Removing the connector to the battery. I'm just removing the connector to the battery so that this cannot be put out. special torque screwdriver here with one old screw to torque the screw and that's the one that's holding the hard drive down. Oh, should we talk about the spaz? Just spare me because I'm, I'm going to get a lot of emails. I'm going to get a lot of emails from people saying, oh my god, you know, you're putting your hands in this thing. You didn't ground yourself. If you live in an area with static electricity and solid power, these look like little gold rods. You absolutely will want to use the Kraken extractor. It's cheap. You can buy them at any electronics store and then put that, attach that to 
a good ground best for your cold water type of thing on the ground, uh, but there are other places like that. The reason I got in the habit of not doing that, we live in Northern California. Have you had any static electricity for any of your not yet. any customers? No, no not, not really a problem. So it, it is actually a problem here. And uh, even if you go out there, it's a little bit windy. You never found me. It's not a problem here. But here, just to make it all better for everybody, we call it hard time. A grounded metal surface is disturbing static. And certainly if you live in an area where there's static, be careful. Static can hurt you and me and, and hurt that machine. It's got very, very low energy. Very, very high energy. I never thought about that. Not that I'm surprised. I just thought that. So that's one thing you have to be careful of. All right, I'm going to unscrew this corkscrew. Single corkscrew. That's it. Only fix the uh, the hard drive in there. And that's it. I am now going to be able to just pull this hard drive out. Not really much to it, huh? Not much. Not really. It's, it's, it's like the, one of those RAM chips, the SSM chips that you <laughs> added. That's it. There's a socket right there. And I'm going to pull that slide out, and that's the hard drive. Now, this is actually the real hard drive. Let me show you the old hard drive so you can see it. It really looks very much the same. It's just a bunch of SSD chips soldered to a circuit board. This is the actual hard drive. There's only one way to put it in. That's by turning it on. You can't get it upside down or backwards. The Apple Dragon will respond and give you a good hard drive. So I'm going to put the, so what's, what's this called? Dial? Sure. Oh, I just removed the Apple Drive. <laughs> but that, like I said, it slides in so much of the wrong way. You can't get this in there. Yeah. You'll even see your magic slot on this thing slot on the hard drive. And it's just going to slide. It really, it's, it's easier than adding RAM in there because it just, it, it, there's not a lot of pressure. It slides in. You know it's in. The screw is good because it holds it right in place. And that's it. And now we've actually put in the new hard drive. I'm going to tighten down your corkscrew. Would you like to do the RAM? Uh, no, I think yeah. I'm fine. Yeah, you're good. You're good at that. Yeah. You have tiny, the tiniest thing. I think it's a small girl. Thank you. Yeah. You just yeah, told me. Yeah, something that only you know. A small girl. Small girl. Yeah. yeah. And I have some small girls in my family. See that one? Uh, you want to try taking it out? Just For your own experience? So I have one. Let's take a look. Is there quality of life for getting these machines one day? Maybe yeah. I want a, a grown-up. Now this is an acute upgrade. Is that you? Yeah. Thank you, Jerry. This is an acute upgrade. Uh, what was the what was the price point on this one exactly? Five hundred and eighty dollars. All right. So it's a little expensive, I admit. Um, you do get a lot more capacity on this gigabyte, but you also get a higher speed. And I'll show you some benchmarks that we ran on this. Most of the increase I got was on speed in this, mm -hmm. and that's true. On SSD, they're very fast if you're reading. I was actually I did the Black Magic tester to test the speed of this. I got the fastest speed on this drive. I have ever seen significantly faster than the speed of the Apple Drive. In fact, I might not even have actually been able to measure that till they fully close up. I'm going to say goodbye. Oh, well, that's before they close up. This is back to back. Yeah, you might even maybe that's maybe that's the reason. Oh, you're yeah. in a hurry on that one. I'm always in a hurry on that. I don't really have much of that in here. That just keep, that just takes forever. Yeah, that other than putting the Apple Drive in, I'm sure I did everything else. That that's right in. Now, the, another question, does this void the warranty? At no point have we done anything that, in my opinion, would tell us that we've done that. Mm -hmm. If you have a problem, put it down on the Liberty Drive, the back of the old drive, put it all together. And I can't see any way that Apple can tell you, oh, there's, there's no don't break your steel warranty void. Technically, of course, you are putting in a warranty there. But I don't think there's any way that Apple can tell you that that's where you place the hard drive. Just make sure you place the <laughs> new hard drive <laughs> ah, before kind of a challenge, I think. It could be a little challenge. That's why you do want to pull this. And I am going to store this, at least for now, until I get much closer in this anti-static bag, because it really does protect it from uh, from the static. So we're going to put that back in there. Now you can just put the top back on there. Okay, so the fastest speed, yeah, the fastest speed time they've ever seen, well over five megabytes per second, a tenth a gigabyte per second of read time. Now, the write times were uh, about the same as the Apple SSD, weren't they? Uh, yeah. You know what? It's very easy to do mathematics. Uh, uh -huh. 90 times plus 2 uh, divides by 12. You uh, see, it's very, it makes it very much, much easier, easier to work with. And this is yeah. a pretty quick. Yeah. So now you have a tenth of a screwdriver and a torque screwdriver if you have to take the parts that were uh, just in the bag. And it really, I mean, that was very, very, uh, little very bit. expensive. It was. <laughs> there are there are smaller drives. If you have a MacBook Air, you can stack the same processor. The MacBook Air, you, in fact, the speed may get easier. There's fewer screws on that. Other world computing and others will tell you and, and upgrade drives will use very
just have to take up the phone, unlock their wallet, they can talk. So this, you know, I'm sure both are proprietary to Sonic and kind of using Sonic as a home. So it's not so very hard while the other work computer gets there to uh, to uh, say, oh, okay, well, I get the badge of trust now. I've got, I've got my big lead on that. It is a fan sport for the controller on the Wii. Uh, I think it took Alan Malvitano and Scott Van Pelt to drive through you at the respective Wii Best controller out there to support the fans, the operating systems, all the other nice things. Yeah. More than 500 megabytes a second at Wii's time. Uh, my right time on the Wii, I know it's only 280 megabytes per second. Right time on the high-speed speed drive was always a little bit slower than the Wii's time, but it was still uh, really fast. And that's what makes, one of the things, in my opinion, that makes uh, these uh, computers nowadays, all these old, you know, MacBook Airs and Mac, MacBook you know, Retinas, so fast. SSD drives, turns out, you can have fast processors, but if the processor's waiting for the hard drive, it's not going to work. Well, I wanted to ask you a question. How do we have a driver that still has an arm? What do ah, we have to do? Okay, so this is the thing that you've got to have to have the driver that still has an arm. Ah, I see. Are you doing that while you're screaming? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Have you ever done that before? <laughs> so Audible's on top of this collection of retail Audibles and greatly popular games of the world, and now with Wix this week, right? Wix is exciting, man. Amazon just announced they're going to add that Wix Kindle feature, which syncs up your reading, your porn sites you're reading uh, on your Kindle, and they said they're going to start adding that to the Apple Watch as well, which is really great. I use the uh, Amazon Audible app on my iPhone, my Windows phone. It also works on my Android phone. That means my whole Audible library is there. I can download any book. I, uh, you know, one of the nice things about Audible, those books are yours forever. So I've been an author for more than 10 years. I've got lots of spare books in my library. I can listen to any one of them anytime. I want you to go to right now, audiblepodcast.com slash Noah. And you can get a free book for free. You will see a choice of, there's 100,000 books total. You'll be signing up for Golden Castle and Book a Month instantly. Your first month is free. Your first book is free. Cancel at any time. Pay no interest. You will keep it forever. Let's go back to John with his uh, great book. Do you ever see any of these? I get to listen to audiobooks when I get home. I'm really excited to see what these are because I like to read and then move on. To the well, next imagine one. you're driving your car, you're on the commute, you're listening to a book, you get home, now you want to read. You synced up the pain point in the book, you can read it. I do that all the time. Yeah, I think it's like Maverick or something, but it's like the one, it's, it's a reader. It's not text. It's not some guy doing text to speech where mm -hmm. you can hear his robotic voice. You get to hear somebody actually doing a big book like this. Let me recommend the book I'm listening to right now. Actually, this is a great book. I've been listening to it my child, my son, who's a senior in high school. He's fascinated by biology. Uh, he's very interested by uh, Darwin, the origin of species and evolution. Richard Dawkins has made a book called The Magic of Reality. I mean, it's an incredible, easy to digest uh, discussion of, uh, of the science of uh, evolution, of biology, of how we know what's really true nice and short, great book for you for the free book, and I recommend another uh, great book if you've got a high school age child, to get them excited about science. Richard Dawkins' new book. He narrates it, by the way. And how long? <laughs> Henry, uh, along with Lola, a lot of the boys, he said, Henry said, how do these guys, they sound so good, what do they, I said, well, it's true, it's really pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting. Audiblepodcast.com slash Noah. Let's go to the next one. Here we go. Um, oh, and Penny. Well, that's not so fast. That wasn't hard, was it? I had to say something. That wasn't speed something. Look, the Chrome app, there's no optical tab. And the new versions of OS X aren't available other than getting it through the App Store. How on earth are we going to get Apple Pencil? You're going to love this. So, of course, if you have the Apple Pencil, as I do here, it's like on Dell. It, it didn't partition with an installer on the drive. But you're right. I just took the drive out. That's a blank drive in there. Well, Apple brought it over here. This is actually one of the great features of OS X. It started with Wine, it's available now in Wine 2. If you hold down Command and R when you first start up your computer, you will boot into the recovery. What if you don't have a recovery drive? I have no partition load on it. It will load the operating system from your memory. There's enough firmware in here for you to go onto your Wi-Fi network, enter in the password. It will then ask you for your Apple credentials. I logged in as myself on my iCloud. It knew that I'd already bought an Apple Watch. It actually knew what computer it was, and it installed it over the air and installed the operating system directly from the network. I said that was almost like a real quote. Reinstall OS X for us. Hold on, let me just do that. You, you don't actually 
need an OS. You don't need a disk. You don't need a, a USB key. You press Command and R to go into the custom area. You have to have a Wi-Fi or an internet network, obviously. But if you're online, it is going to pop up. And that is a very cool thing because nobody needs a boot disk. Nobody needs an operating system disk. If you're using a Macintosh, you can always go out there and install the version of the operating system that came with this machine. Now, that's something I want to point out. This machine came with Lion on an outboard. So it installed Lion. I immediately upgraded. And uh, I was good to go. But that'll have the settings that you had on the disk as well, right? This is a fresh it's install. It's a fresh install. So that's another reason why you might want to take advantage of Apple's um, uh, I'm not sorry, of other world computing external drive. Because if I had the external drive cable here, then you would need that. I could then pop it right away when you go to launch it. And you know what's great? You could actually probably just copy that from your carbon copy clone app to a regular hard drive and just boot up you that should machine be right away. I shouldn't say that, but I assume that anybody who's watching this show has already had an app, right? Of course they have. Of course you have. So I'm going to boot it right away. It's very fast. I can't wait to see how many times I've installed that operating system. And let me just quickly run the black magic disk tester. Let's just see what kind of speed we're getting on this nice new other world computing uh, drive which cost me how much i thought it was five eighty five eighty it's it's expensive it's something you know if you're buying a retina you would already spend a lot of money on this it's something every every little computer now when i started my actual sort of yeah and they even have an excellent radio um on how to do this all right so there it is the black magic disk speed test is available in the uh in the um apple store it's designed black magic is an advanced video equipment so it's designed to see if your hard drive is fast enough to record high def video and stuff like that uh, you choose the target disk you choose the size of the stressed file it should be the largest five gigabytes and i'm going to choose the target drive there's only one drive in here so i don't really have to worry about that and then let's just press the start and let's see how fast uh, this drive is right now reading 280 megabytes per second yeah megabytes not megabits megabytes and watch it detects it so i don't know what the speed is it may actually be faster than that it is not only in the red it is tentative at the maximum of five or four <laughs> megabytes per second it could actually be faster we're going to need more time it's not that it was just faster than that that's how fast this drive is it's so fast that the black magic can just boot up a disk it's really quite fast i think let me see if i can show you what we're reading so you're not just upgrading you're actually <laughs> Lousy copy of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Clean it. This thing's pretty good, I have to say. Uh, that's the advantage of SSD. Uh, 300 megabytes per second reads it. Uh, right. Because it's always going to be negative. Yeah. I mean, we don't know how fast uh, it's going to be. So you can find this uh, at MacSales.com right now. And, uh, you know, it's expensive to buy. But I've done a number of upgrades before, and this is the same kind of upgrading concept here. And I've had good results. And I love it because it's a retina screwdriver. Now I have it. I have a large retina screwdriver. Driver, I'm ready to uh, to work, and I'll tell you, those things are fast to boot. A little bit faster than the stock Apple drive, a lot bigger, and there you go. That's how you do it. It's not so hard, actually. It's just yeah, I mean, it was it was that hard? It was really simple. It was like you shouldn't be scared. No, don't be scared because if I could do it, you would be able to do it. So basically, what I mean, I'm just I would want to. That well, sounds like fun. I mean, the hardest thing I think right now is actually trying to hold the screen because it's so small. Yeah. Once they got the Mac Pro, it's two. nice that they have a Mac Pro instead of the Mac Pro Two. Anyway, thank you uh, for uh, letting me uh, do this upgrade and giving me a seat at all times. Yes, that's exactly why we do the show. <laughs> Get you a seat to find the show. And by the way, folks, if you want to talk to Bruce or any of the things we talked about, or you want to see the d detailed discussion, they're available at Bruce.Computer.ca. Obviously, this episode's pretty easy, so you can just do it in about 15 minutes. If you wanted to, it's a cool little thing. You just have to cut the sheet. It might take you 15 minutes to do. So that's again the seminar kit available at bit.com/slash/bay. And you know what? We actually got an email the other day. We did because uh, we did that episode on breaking news, and we got a lot of people wondering why he did that. We got this great email from Richard Caldwell, who said he just finished watching the DM episode, and he wanted to mention another issue for him. He runs critical and time-consuming software. It took a very long time for him to install software on his VM. But the hardware guy, he has the ability to take that VM and take it to a new piece of hardware just like that without having to reinstall anything. So it's a great use of piece of hardware like the Virgin Machine. So thank you, Richard, for writing in. We really appreciate it. And thank you for watching uh, the show. We'll see you over there next week. Maybe I gave you a week off, but you, you've been very, yeah, very we've elaborate. Been, we've been doing some homes work here. So <laughs> Did you really? You know what? I'll tell you how I'm doing. We're going to take some time. Good. Let's help people with the homework.
Show you my old one. 